Hello YouTubers and welcome to this next in the series on calculators and maths. Now in the last video I said that we would start looking at performance benchmarks for calculators. Now that proved to be a fair bit of a challenge because I've managed to do some programming on my TI-84 and I've also hit my head against some challenges. So that's the one thing I'll show you and we'll talk about. The next thing I've got all the other calculators lined up on the bench here including we'll start off with a standard scientific calculator because one of you kindly supplied me with a little simple function to do to test the performance of a calculator. It was an integral it's a, and what I've done I've played around with a, a definite integral so I've set limits for that integral and we're going to time it across these calculators. Now some of the results may be expected but some of the results might actually be quite surprising. Now the one interesting thing I found was that I had to set the limit so that it's run across all the calculators because some of the calculators and notably are surprised the HP 50G couldn't handle one of the limits that are supplying it with but we'll talk about that once we start that performance test. Right so let's go and take a look at the programs that I've been playing with and I'll uh, talk about the challenges I've had and the potential learning that will come out of them. So ultimately what I wanted to do was have for one a nice straightforward uh, function that we could run easily across all calculators and see how long it takes to do and very much thanks to the gent that provided me with the integral um, what I've done is obviously set it up as a definite integral with limits and if that gent I did say whoever came up with this I'd send a prize to so if that gent he, if he posts a note in this video to me I'll contact him and then I'll arrange to send him a prize for coming up with this now the challenge was, I say with this, was actually setting the limits on some of the calculators. If you go over the limit, sometimes you, the calculator can't calculate it. And I was surprised that I wanted to actually have a negative low limit and the HP actually struggled with that. Um, but anyway, so this provides one of the benchmarks. The other benchmark, and I wrote some programs, was I had a performance test which was going to iterate through some calculations, but because we've got that nice easy function now to run across we don't need that we're going to go on a graphical performance test and then on the end queen which is a problem solving algorithm so if you recall I demonstrated the drawing slash graphing and what I've done in this program we'll just go into the editing of it all this does is simply draw concentric circles which are growing bigger the radius grows bigger by one till about 49 and it obviously takes a fair bit of time to do that and the one thing I've added to this in the programming is that it grabs the time the in from the internal clock of the calculator it obviously grabs that at the start of the program and then computes the difference from the start time to the end time when it's finished so that I don't have to have a stopwatch when I'm doing that timing because that could take quite long and if I'm running across several calculators it means I don't have to kind of hover over them so that's the function I've built into it but it's also kind of opened my eyes up to some of the programming abilities of these. It's been a long time since I've done any programming so I must say it was a nice little uh, exercise for my mind to sit down with this and play with the programming. But you've got the functionality where you can go store things in lists which are similar to another programming term let's say something like an array. So it's multiple items in a single memory slot. Um, and they call it a list on this calculator. So what I do in this program, I basically go and grab the time, I say get time and I put it into list one, L1. And then from that, I can go and mathematically do things to eat the items in that list. And when you put the time into a list, it separates out the minutes, hours, minutes and seconds. So I basically do a bit of math on that and I store it and then I, I have it go through and it does the circle, does the radius and once it's finished it then gets the time again and from that it does the difference between the two and displays it. So again if people are interested in kind of going through programming something like the 84 then that's perhaps something we can have a look at in the future. One of the challenges for me which I'll talk about right now is that when I try and transfer that to something like the TI-89, 
you soon realize the difference is the ease of working, let's say, on something like the 84 to trying to easily transition to the 89. And this is something I highlighted before. Many folks have mentioned they've got their TI-84, they go out and buy a nice 89 because they're going to think it's a nice upgrade. But there's a bit of a learning curve to get around uh, the menu interface on this. And also the programming language is slightly different in the syntax. It's more powerful, it makes more use of the calculator features, but it's different. So it's not a straightforward transition. The other challenge for me, which I'll talk about now, is that ultimately I want to uh, not just have to edit and work with a program on the keyboard or the calculator. I wanted to do it on my computer. So there I had to find an IDE um, to be able to design an integrated design environment to be able to work on my computer and then transfer the programs to the calculators. So at least I could almost cut and paste, make the changes and then let's say upload them to the 89. So, and there's a few stumbling blocks there to find a nice IDE to understand how they work so you can work offline and then upload programs to your various calculators. And again, if folks are interested in that, we can do videos on that. Right, so now that we've got the kind of form of how this works, I'll quickly demonstrate this one. If we go to programs, uh, the first cir uh, circle draw I've got up here is the one which doesn't have the time. So if I enter on the second one, we execute it. You can see it's thinking. It's got the kind of thinking mode over here that it's working. You can see it's drawing the ever increasing circle radius and it actually counts up over here the radius uh, starting at obviously 0 and it goes up to 49. Once we get up to 49, it'll exit this and actually tell us how many seconds it's taken to draw on that. Right, so there we go. It's completed and it comes out with seconds and that took 56 seconds to do. So I'm quite happy with that because it's not too short. If the time was too short, it wouldn't be easy to do comparisons across other calculators. And it's not too long, so you're not sitting there indefinitely. It just manages to fill up the screen with some graphics and then bum jumps out. So my challenge now is to try and replicate that across the other machines. Right, so let's have a look at the third benchmark. And that being now, so we're also going to have the circle draw, the, the integration function, which is obviously straight off the command line, and then the end queens. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, end queens or eight queens, go and have a look at the previous video. I explain the kind of mathematical challenge with this. It's basically having uh, some queens on a chessboard which can't take each other. And there's several permutations as to how those can be arranged. And it's the number of permutations that can be done on a, an X by X chessboard that derives the answer. So I've got this running, but there is a bug. So I'm just going to show you. We execute it. The first thing it asked me is n. So n is the size of the chessboard. So I'll start off, let's say, 2 by 2. I only need to enter the 2 for the 2 by 2 chessboard. Enter. And bang, it's come up and said there are six permutations that you can have for that problem. So that come up fairly quickly. I haven't added the time to this yet because I've still got a bug. And I'll just demonstrate that. We'll go to, obviously, 2 by 2 is very small. We'll run this again. We'll go to a 3 by 3 You'll see it took a little bit longer to think about that. Came up with an answer of 18. Next we'll go to 4. And that's where I hit the problem. I've been debugging problems within the calculator with relative ease. It normally comes up and gives you a go-to so you can understand where your error is. But in this case, I can't understand why it's not telling me where. It's saying there's an error with a label. I've looked at everything and I cannot find what the issue is. So I've got a bit of homework to do to try and resolve that. At the end of the day, at least I've got the fundamental program working. I know that once you start stepping up the number to, let's say, something like 10 or 15, it will take a serious amount of effort for one of these to do the work. And then we can have a comparison across the other calculators. And again, what I'll do is add that little time piece where I grab the time at the start of the execution at the end, and it'll display the time. So that's the one challenge. So let's move on and have a look at that little integral problem and how it runs out across the rest of the calculators. Right, so we're ready to go. What I've got, I've got a sheet here where I've got the calculator benchmark. As noted, it's a definite integral between 0 and 6 of e, the natural number e, x raised to the power x cubed, 
dx. Now we're going to run that across all these calculators. I've got a stopwatch, we're going to time it. And the reason I've got them in this order uh, will probably show it. I just want to show some kind of contrasting results and then perhaps some interesting results towards the end. So let's start as a benchmark with the normal scientific, the TI-36X Pro. Right, ready to go. I've brought you in so you can see the display. On this calculator, there'll be a little hourglass in the top over here, hourglass annotation, as it's sitting trying to work this out. I'm going to hit the Enter key and at the same time start the stopwatch. There we go. There is the hourglass. Right, there we go. It's finally, finally spat out the answer. I'll obviously time lapse that so you don't sit through the whole 1 minute 48 that it took. So that'll be the first one that we note down and then we'll move on to the next one. Right, next we have the HP 50G. I have the function ready to test. I'm going to click on evaluate and then I'll start the timer. There we go, you can see the hourglass in the top there. There we go. So it's finally come up with an answer. One minute, five seconds. I was very surprised at the performance of the HP. I expected it to be better. Right, next we have the Casio FX 986 or 9860G2. All I need to do here is I'm highlighting that for it to execute again. And we'll see a little dot in the corner as it actually is thinking about it. So one, two, three, there's the dot. done. So you can see a vast difference compared to the other two. Now fair enough, obviously the scientific, TI scientific is a smaller machine, but I was expecting the 50G to do a little bit better. But anyway, so six seconds and I'm rounding down just for a little reaction time. I'll write, round down to the nearest second on each of these. So only six seconds for this Casio. Right, so now we have the other Casio, the Casio FX CG10. This is obviously the more fancy color version of the previous Casio. I've got the function highlighted. I'm going to push the execute button in three, two, one. Thinking. And that's a little bit faster. Um, it's close. I said I'd round down, but that's 4.7 seconds. So I'll note, I'm going to note that as about 4.5. Right, next we have the Texas Instruments Inspire CX CAS. Again, same function. I'm going to push enter and start. One, two, three. And basically, it's almost not worth stopping, starting the stopwatch because it comes up with the answer immediately. I'll just do that again. So if I enter on that, bang. The answer appears straight away. It's less than a second. So I'll note that as such. Next we have the HP Prime. Any guesses whether I need the stopwatch or not? I tell you, I'm not even going to put my finger on the stopwatch. We'll just push enter and see. And bang. And I would hesitate to say that it's probably quicker than the Inspire. It's almost there immediately. There's probably a split second with the Inspire if we're splitting ball hairs. But nonetheless, virtually immediately for the HP Prime. Next we have the TI-89 Titanium, and there we go, I've got the integral function defined with its limits on the command line there. I'm just going to get ready to push enter, and it's one, three, two, one, go. And you can see it says busy in the lower right. So I'm waiting over there. There we go, 14 and a bit seconds. So I'll round it down to 14 just to put it in its favor, just in case there's a little lag on my finger and we'll see how the 84 does. Right, so it's time for the TI-84 and I had forgotten, of course, I've got the class pad. So I've added that to the list. We'll do that after the 84. 
But here I was a little surprised. We'll see at this result um, as we get it. So three, two, one, bang. It's thinking it's got that little emblem in the top corner over there. Going 7.6 seconds. I'm going to round down again. So that is half the time of the 89. And that certainly was a surprise for me. I expected the 89 to be faster, but it took twice as long. But there you go, I'll just note it down. Right, so it's time for the class pad. You'll have to excuse the flicker. It's just the uh, setting I've got it on, unfortunately, is conflicting with the frame rate of the camera. But there's a function, the integral and the lower and upper limits of the integral. Um, when I push execute on this, you're going to see a little round circle that does the busy thinking down the bottom here. So that's what I'll be looking at. So three, two, one, go. There we go. And it's popped out the answer already very quickly, actually, 3.5 seconds. Right, so here we go. I've got all the results written down. And I've noted in first place, and it was only by a ball hair, um, but I think if you go and look, at, look back at the video, literally immediately as I pushed the enter key on the HP, it spat out the answer. The TI Inspire was a fraction of a second behind. And we've seen from other work that the HP Prime seems to be, have a very fast processor. So that's certainly at first place. The TI Inspire second. Then third, we've actually got the Casio Class Pad, which I was actually quite surprised about. I hadn't reckoned it was going to do it that quickly. In fourth place, we've got the Casio FX CG10. Then in fifth place, we've got the FX9860 G2, not far behind its bigger brother. Then in sixth place, we've got the 84, and what I thought actually was quite a respectable time in comparison to the seventh place, the 89. It managed to beat out the 89 by going more than double the speed. And then we go to eighth place, which is really boggles my mind is the HP 50G. I certainly expected it to perform far better, but it wasn't. And then we come back to our kind of benchmark on the TI 36 Pro. Now, if people are really interested, I've got a couple of other scientifics which do uh, integration as well and might just be inter interesting to see uh, how well they perform. What I might do is actually try and find another scientific calculator, not a graphing calculator, which manages to compete time-wise with let's say some of these. Right then, so I hope you found that interesting. I say if you gain any value out of that then certainly please do give the video a thumbs up and share it. Um, Again, I was quite surprised at the results. I, I've got the 50G here and the 84. And what I want to highlight again is I hadn't expected that a benchmark or the performance of a calculator would be that critical. But as you can see, if you happen to be in an exam situation or in a very important meeting or, or if you're trying to work out some maths under pressure and they were potentially testing on a calculator, you could be sitting for quite a while if you're doing it on a 50G, whereas we know that, that the HP Prime is blazingly fast. But if you're sitting with something, let's say like the 84, uh, in comparison to the 50G, it, it really is chalk and cheese in terms of how long you're gonna sit and wait to get an answer. And that could be fairly critical. So I don't need yet know how the other benchmarks are gonna perform across these calculators. As I say, I want to try and get those uh, running across all of them. It's going to be a bit of a challenge, but hopefully I'll get there in the end and we'll see how well they perform with both, let's say, the N Queen's algorithm and then the graphical test. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you soon for the next one. Cheers. <music>